Hello everyone, I'm here bringing you another RenPy tutorial. Today I want to talk about screens, and I know I've already talked about custom screens and screen language before, but I feel like it needs to be covered again at a more fundamental level. So we're going to talk about what is a screen, how do you show a screen, what are the components of screens, and things like that. So. A screen is basically a way to display something into into to the user. But more importantly than that, it has another function and that is what it says right here. It allows the user to interact with the game. You can have buttons and bars and you know, stuff that happens when you click on it and stuff that happens when you do key presses, all sorts of things like that. So it's, it's a way to make your game more interactive. So for instance, if you're going to make a mini game, you're probably going to need a custom screen. So the screen language is its own language. It's not Python. It's not the regular RenPy scripting. It's its own thing. And the reason for this is because it's a very different style than the regular scripting. What it is, is that it has some control statements such like if such and such condition, then do whatever. You've already become familiar with that, hopefully, in the control flow video. But instead of an action to perform, if the statement is true, it's going to be a component to show if the if the condition is true. So screen language is a way to list a bunch of different things that you want to display. And some of these will be interactable and some of them won't. So if there's a few parts, oops, there's a few parts to any screen. The first part is screen and then whatever name you want and then a colon and this denotes a screen block now as long as you stay indented in here everything down here is going to be in the screen if i put something over here that's not going to be part of the screen because it's not inside the screen block so i need to be indented the most basic thing you can do with a screen is add an image. So I'm going to add black as an image. The interesting thing about image colors is that they'll expand to fill the available space. And so if I change my script or make my script say show screen my screen, which is how you show a screen, and I run this, it's going to show all black, a black background, basically. Now I can add other images on top of here. I can add some text on top of here. I can add a button on top of here. The key idea here is that whatever gets put on the screen gets put on in order so that this, if, if this is what you want to be your background, you have to put it first. Otherwise it will go on top of something else. So I want to emphasize something really important that it says here in the documentation, screens must not cause side effects that are visible from outside the screen. And I'm going to show you an example of what you should not do. Let's say I have a variable called i and it starts off at zero. If I put here something that says i plus equals one, so that's adding one to i, and then I have a text that displays i, then basically the 
the key thing to take away from here is that this I will get updated an unknown number of times. So if I run this, you'd think it'd be one, wouldn't you? But look, it changed up to two. That's because RenPy runs screens whenever it feels it needs to, whenever something updates, whenever there's a new interaction. So if I click, it goes up to three. And the times in which it can do that is unpredictable in any given time. It can be different for different runs of the exact same code. It can be it, it can be, you know, all sorts all over the place. So with this number, you can already see, look at that. Look, it's gone up to eight now. You can already see that we don't want to, when the screen runs, change something. That's what's known as a side effect that is visible outside the screen. However, there are still ways to have screens make changes and make them safely. And that's with something called screen actions. That's by, that's done by making a interactable screen component that will perform an action when it gets clicked on or when you hover or whatever. So I'm going to put right here, text button mm. I'm gonna get rid of this by the way text button up I and then I'm gonna say action set variable Oops, set variable i to i plus one. Now this is a safe way to have i incremented. Uh, and I'm going to show you why. And that's because it depends on interaction with the user. So an interaction is something that the user can control. They can decide whether to click on this or not. I'm going to give this some X align 0 0.5, Y align 0 0.5. These are properties. We'll talk about those a little bit later. But um, this is a safe way to have an interaction change something because it's done in a predictable way. It's not a side effect. Up I. So it's zero right now. That's what it's supposed to be at the beginning. Every time I click this, it'll go up. But this is predictable because the user knows exactly what is happening. Anywhere else, then we go to the end of the game. Now, so let's talk about properties. There are any, any screen component has a list of properties that it can take. And you can look at the documentation here. This is uh, runpy.org slash doc slash HTML slash screens dot HTML. Uh, you can also just Google search runpy screens. You can look at things like at add and it'll take properties it says take properties and then you can look at something like a label and that'll take some text and some text style and stuff like that as a property you can look at a text a regular text button here and it'll have some other things besides it'll have some common properties and all these things you can look these up if you're ever unsure of what a particular component will take 
Um, I'm not going to go over every single thing and what it takes because that's going to take forever. And you guys probably don't want to listen to me go through all that. But there are also other things that a screen component can take with the after the colon after it. And those are screen components that take children. So for instance, HBox, it says it displays its children side by side in an invisible horizontal box. It takes these properties but it also takes UI displayable children that are added to the box. So if I wanted to do put have the up eye and text eye right next to each other, I could say H box and then the children would be once again tabbed over because this is a block. So this needs to be tabbed over, this needs to be tabbed over, and this needs to be tabbed over, and this. Well, I wouldn't have this anymore. So if I do that, then I have zero and up eye right next to each other. And I can up eye as many times as I want. And there are other containers as well. And the containers were mostly what I covered on my earlier screens tutorial. But um, I wanted to talk about the concepts here. So next up after properties and children is actions. Screen actions are have their own separate page. There's a whole listing of different actions, but the, the basic idea of this is that it's something that the screen does when something is activated, hovered, unhovered, whatever. When, when something happens, when you interact with it somehow, this action happens. You can have things like calling a label or jumping to a label. You can have something for return if you called your screen. A return can return a value. You can show another screen. You can hide another screen. You can do some data things like right here, set variable to the variable to a value. There's a lot of different actions and you can define your own. There's um, also the, if I scroll down here, there is way down here function what for this you would give it a python function and then whatever arguments you want to pass to it so you can create your own custom functionality to happen from a screen but the basic way you're going to do it is for any button or hovered thing or something like that, you're going to say either action this. We could say, we could also put it like this in a block. We could say hovered. Do we have hovered for text buttons? See, I even need to check. Yes, it has hovered. We can have hovered, let's make a new variable, default hovering equals false. And then we'll say, let's give this some spacing. And then hovered will be set variable hovering to true. And then of course we need an unhovered as well to set it back to false.
Let's see what that looks like. True, false, true, false, click goes up, click goes up, true, false, true, false. So that's how you can add interactability to your screens using the predefined actions and functions. And you can even define your own, but that's a little bit more advanced. Um, so if you're still learning, I'd recommend using custom functions rather than trying to define your own actions. And really the documentation for this is pretty extensive. It doesn't have an example for every single property for every single screen component, but it has common use samples for all the components, basically. So here's our text button screen. And here's a screen for just text by itself, things like that. It, it really is pretty good documentation. I know a lot of people rag on the RenPy documentation and I know it's being revamped right now, but it's, it's sufficient if you know how to find what you're looking for and how to, how to read it basically. So anyway, I hope that this tutorial was helpful. I hope it gave you a good idea of what a screen can do for you and how you would start going about learning each of the pieces you need. And I hope to see you in the next video.